I came, started from the Acadia McDonald's, and uh, I was looking for another place to come. And then they built this, and I sat down at that first booth, and I'm in there every day. And uh, Walt came in, and he sat at the other booth facing me, and we started talking, and I invited him over to my booth. Oh, it was a few, few, few weeks maybe then. Yeah. It wasn't just a, a couple of days and then move yeah. over and then, no, no. There was we, that separation there. We had to trust there. each other. It's going into three years. I first started coming here when I uh, went full time at where I work now. I started coming in earlier to get some breakfast. And I met, uh, as I came in, you know, well, I met Jerry. I think that was everybody's first point of contact was Jerry Rains. I've been coming here for probably um, 10 years uh, because I moved over here from Riverside 10 years ago. But I didn't meet the group that comes here. Um, I met them maybe like about four years ago maybe. I used to sit down here. Somehow I ended up down there talking to them and then, and then our group kept growing and growing and growing. And now we're up to uh, probably around 20 people. When we first started coming here, good lord, that's what. I've been here at least going on about 15 years. Yeah. You know, but uh, I didn't meet him until uh, later on. About five years. We used to go down to the other McDonald's down there. Yeah. You know? Then before that, we used to go to the coffee shop or the donut shop. Usually everybody hangs out at a certain place like McDonald's. There's a, they, there's a different group in Duarte, there's a different group here. I'm usually come over here maybe like between 4 or 4.30 in the morning. And then they start coming in about, about 5.30. About, about Most of them come every day or at least three times a week, you know. And, uh, and if I don't show up, they call me and say, where are you? <laughs> so I have to be here every day. Why here? Just more, we ended up being more like a club, more friends, yeah. more friends and stuff. Mm -hmm. And then I met Roy here. And, we always wondering, you know, what he's doing, if he's, you know, he's like 91 years old. He goes in bed without a nurse. He goes in bed without a nurse. <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, yeah. What's good about the, uh, the, our particular group there, too, is that it's not just the guys. I know. Is that yeah. the, the, we have the group that the, the women are coming here also. Yeah, we're up to four regular women now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there's some kids in the McDonald, which there's quite a few at times. We get very open as they're like aunts and uncles, and grandmothers and grandpas. Little kids in here, they come up to me all the time and start talking to me. When they see my hair, they always come over to my table to show me all of their little, you know, iPods and everything they have. Half the time, I don't even know what they're showing me, but they just jabber away. This is kind of fun. This is the first time, like joined a group like this. <laughs> it's kind of got a warm feeling when you walk in, you know people. The owners, both the husband and wife, they're both very nice people. And it's partly because they're from Iowa. <laughs> and I'm, I'm from Iowa too. Midwestern um, hospitality, I guess you'd say. And, and nowhere else, it doesn't seem to happen that way at any of the other McDonald's or or any other restaurants. Both of us came from the Arcadia thing, and it's not nearly as friendly. The one over there, Mayflower, and that is very open and very, very friendly. Atmosphere. The people. Yeah, and the people. Yeah. We're like a big happy family. Yeah, the, the people here. We've got a big, big rock to crush about that big. Just get a sledgehammer. How big a hammer should I get? Just get a sledgehammer. Sledgehammer? Yeah. How big? I'm about 20 pounds. 20 pounds? Yeah. Can you help? Yeah. <laughs> and we like the music. Yeah. It's more our time. <laughs> Play the game, what's the, who, who's that singing? Who wrote that? Who's right. singing that song? You know? That's what we do in that. The music that they play here, you know, it brings back a lot of memories back like in the 50s and stuff. You got your nice cars and, you know, the women mm -hmm. and, you know, school day, your school days and stuff like that, you know. And then you feel like you feel like you're going back into time, you know. You get to learn a lot, His, history. Uh, you know, I mean, there's a lot of experience sometimes in this place. They're all unique people, right? Though. They are. They're unique people. Especially this guy. This is the one that I really think a lot about. You know, Roy here, because he's like 91 years old. And my God, that 
the stuff he was been through, you know, like in the Navy, uh, building houses. I think he most of them over the Pasadena, the San Marino, your houses you built. Uh, Carlos track. Yeah, and then he built one for the Queen of uh, Queen of Pasadena. Oh, the uh, Rose Parade Queen. Yeah, the Rose Parade Queen. Yeah, yeah. built uh, two houses. Two houses for her, for Rose. Yeah, so he's the one that's really. You know, I didn't even get phantoms. Both of us uh, pass on a lot of stories in there too. That that he has, he's very, you know, he's writing his autobiography, and he's writing the the whole thing in pen, cursive. Pencil. I started that back in. I guess probably when I was 24. I was raised on a farm. And I had animals all around me, and my life was either school or farm. You learn a lot from animals. You learn about life, death, and how to keep on going. You talk never, to the animals, huh? I, that's right, I talk to the animals. Yeah. Many times I was out there sitting in the middle of them. They're all gathered <laughs> around me, sitting there. You always name a few. They come running when you call them. I had chickens running behind me when I called them. <laughs> You think, would a chicken remember a name? Yes. They've got all this experience. They've got all this knowledge of what happened years before. You now, I've uh, been a forklift mechanic all my life, and I've owned a business here in Monrovia for 30 years. I've, I've watched everything come and everything go here. You ever see, like, happy days and stuff like that, you know? And that's the way it used to be, you know? Yeah. Yeah, I and your hot rod car and everything, yeah, you know, you Especially did. cars. The 50s and 60s were the best years of my, of my life, I think. Yeah. We had the best music. Yeah, yeah we had yeah, the best music. Had, I'll drink to that. Yeah, we had a lot, of, a lot of places to go. There was a teen canteen. There was a, there was a car hops, you know. And there was a lot of places you could meet people, you know. Even if you sit out in the back or whatever, you know, you'd still have a good time. Always had a real ni nice clothes. Nice cars and stuff like that, you know. I had my shoes shined, you know, and stuff that I don't do anymore, you know. But at that time, you know, you were really thought you were something else, you know. You thought you you wanted to be cool, you know. Got top haircut, you know, all that stuff. Combing your hair like Fonzie, you know, and stuff like that. Now you look back and you says, "Oh my God, did I do that? Was that me?" Then you see some of the coolest guys you used to meet, you know, they, they were friends of yours, and all of a sudden you see that they passed away. That's what you know really sad about it, you know. You guys, you see them in wheelchairs, you see them like in breathing tubes, you know. Where, you know, and I said, my God, was that that real cool guy? Was that the one that beat my butt up that day? Now I can kick his down, you know. <laughs> we all get old. That's the problem. Yeah. Things change. Things change. But we still got good memories. A story about my hair. Everybody always wants to know about my hair. Well. I was getting my hair cut at a barber shop and this lady cut my hair one day and she kind of combed it up in the front. And it looked kind of cool, I thought. She said, why don't you let that grow up, you know? And, and I said, oh, I think I will because I'm going to go to my class reunion back in Iowa. And I wanted to look different, you know, because in high school, my father was a barber and he always combed my hair, every hair in place, you know, I had to be like his model. I thought, well, let's go back to my reunion and shock people. It was kind of a conversation piece, so I decided to leave it, and it's been a lot of fun. I've met a lot of people because of, of my hair. Yeah, the biggest thing here was, was when Manny didn't show up and I found out he had his heart attack, you know. Yeah. I mean, wow. I had a bypass. I had a bypass. And yeah. First thing I told my girlfriend when I was in the hospital, I was just, what do you want me to do? I says, go down to McDonald's over there and tell those guys the reason I hadn't been there is because, you know, I had that bypass. I says, tell them to go over there at 4 o'clock in the morning. She said, well, I can't get up that early in the morning. <laughs> I was in there for about 10 days. That was about a couple of months ago. First thing I thought about in the morning when I'd wake up, I said, oh my God, man, I miss McDonald's. <laughs> There's the other thing that happens in a, in a group like ours or down there at McDonald's too is that there's people that are getting older and uh, like I'm a, one of the older persons I think might be the oldest maybe yes. right now and yeah this age is below that all the way to the 70 that, that the Clint just you know, no no I'm younger than that 17 <laughs> that's right, all the way down to 17 that's right you're forgetting that looks are so deceptive <laughs> <laughs> thanks
<laughs> but they keep tabs on what uh, how things are going with you, you know. There's face times in that too when it looked like it was imminent that this was not gonna not gonna be continue on, that that we pass on. Uh, there's a uh, a thing that, that that I like too is that uh, there will be a time when we may not be here, but this is not that day. And you just take that day over and you just say, okay, I'll do try and do the best I can with that. This is a gift to me. So they, they're, they're looking at older people like that, not, not that much older actually, but uh, for, for the path. We're gonna lose people and we're going to, uh, you know, things and I think for that human connection to be there, it's, that's what you need, even if it's just to grab the hand and hold it and just don't say anything. My father went to McDonald's over there every day. When my father passed away, then all he had a lot of friends there, just like I have a lot of friends here. And all the friends took up a collection. One of the managers uh, took up a collection uh, for my mother. And instead of uh, uh, instead of buying her flowers, they gave her money. And uh, so they they gave her a nice little lump sum, you know, which helped her a lot. I, th I think it's a special place McDonald's is, and uh, it, uh, we hear the, all, the, all the stories and uh, marvel at all they eat. Their... I'm assuming it created a great friendship between two people. Yeah, yeah. And it's been for a long time. Yeah, it's almost family now. They were almost like brothers in that. Right. Which is scary. <laughs> 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 no, not really. For me, it's that, yeah, that touch. Because a lot of the people are lonely that come in here. Uh, they welcome the, the chance to be part of our group, you know. And then once they get in with our group, they stick with us, you know. Most of them stick for quite a while. What would you guys do if you didn't have the group anymore? Oh. Well, we'd lose a lot of friends. The day wouldn't progress ahead, I think in, a, as a, as a, in such a happily way. I'd probably walk in here, buy something, and go back to my office <laughs> and eat by myself. How would your day feel? Oh, probably a little less, you know. Uh, I think every time we make, we need each other. We need each other to support one another or just to feel that human contact. and. We joke around a lot and have a good time in the morning. And uh, so that's what, you know, it helps your day start a little better, I think. Well, if I didn't have that group, I don't know. It's just kind of like, uh, I don't know. I, have, I don't really know. We've been doing it so long, yeah, it's hard, it's it's hard to say. Like I said, we've been friends for so long. We tell each other a lot of things we wouldn't tell our wives, you know. <laughs> like I said, it's a warmth you're not going to get from a computer. <laughs> I think people, oh, I feel good, you know, I'm talking that, you have some kind of meeting of the minds, you know, but until, I don't know, for me, when I can look somebody in the eyes and I can see their face, and especially in their eyes, and you can, you can read them, you know, you can't read the person on the computer. That's why some people get into serious trouble. I don't think I would like to meet somebody online, you know, I, I like to... Well, I would like to be able to talk to them on the telephone, but you know, I just I don't meet people that way. I, I meet them in, in person. I've never done anything like that. I don't know. <laughs> Have you? What? Did somebody you met on the internet or you've never been, met them in person? Oh, I, I've never met anybody that way. Yeah. I'm the kind of person I like to meet somebody and talk to them. And That's the way I am. I, I'd rather meet somebody in person yeah. than talk to them on a the telephone or something like that. Uh, the internet to me is the marketplace. It's out on the street, and there are things I'm not going to put out there for people on the street. You know, uh, I don't know. I guess the younger crowd, it's like, my goodness, <laughs> you're going to tell them all this? <laughs> You don't know who's out there reading this. Uh, that to me is, I don't know, just not, I don't know, communicating, you know, like you normally would. But, uh, Do you think people are lonelier? Do you think younger people are lonelier? Yeah. You know, you've got to be with friends to have friends, you know? 
And when you're looking at somebody on a computer, that's not being, no, that's not, I don't know, I don't know how you'd say uh, being personal or anything like that. Well, technology spin all the way away from us to the point where we're still tied in this particular way of thinking and their way out there in the app versus app versus app versus app plan. Will we still be capable to emotionally get involved with other people face to face? The people are becoming like computers too, you know. They, some of them don't really know how to uh, carry on a conversation, you know, because they they do everything online. When I was a kid, uh, you know, when I would walk down the street, I would always talk to the older people. But now the young people, they don't talk to the older people out on the streets. They ignore you. The high school kids especially, they walk down the street like this, you know, texting, and they walk right by you. They don't even see you. I can't figure how they can have the same balance that we have or the same feelings that we have when they're doing on online. How do you tell what a friend is without really... It's changing. Yeah. Yeah. Because so. yeah. that is a little worrisome that they're just, you know, sitting in... Everybody's in their own room. I don't know. It's like some horrible science fiction <laughs> show. Everybody never talks. They don't come out of their room. They're just sitting there, you know, making up things. I tried that for a while, the dating online there, too. Don't believe photographs. <laughs> <laughs> People shouldn't just stay at home. They ought to get out and do something, do things. I go on the train a lot. I go to like farmer's market in Los Angeles and, or I get on the train and go clear to Long Beach or I go to Santa Monica to the promenade. I get out and do things like that. I don't want to just sit at home and vegetate, you know. I was never good at being a vegetarian. <laughs> What do you think what about, the about being on the internet? Do what? What do you think about being on the internet? What about the internet? What yeah. do you think about being on there? I'm not on the internet. No. Are you not? I was telling her how you used to build computers. Yeah. It's not on the internet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was not famous. <laughs> so you wouldn't be able to just be happy being online and not speaking to people? Oh, like no. Online? No. No, because uh, to me that's, the other one is just fine for information and for, you know, seeing stuff and that's fine. You can enjoy that. There's nothing wrong with it. But if it starts to, that's the only way I live, you're just living in that virtual world, I suggest you come out and you get in the real one, the messy real one with the people that, you know, yeah, they don't always make you happy, but that's life. I just wonder how many people that are on laptops, do they belong to groups or do they join groups or are they just joining the computer or the laptop? What I'm saying is, do they have friends outside of that other than what's on the box that they were working with? Okay, When there's so many people right around them, they probably would be one of the best friends. Yeah. But they'll never know. I just like to be around people. I'm a people person. Why do I like people? I don't know. It's hard to figure that out sometimes, huh? We're made to be together, not separate. And we're made to help each other and to, you know, to just enjoy one another. Because I think we pull apart because people have been hurt and things like this. And that's right, and that's valid. I mean, you know, if you've been hurt, but the best way to heal that hurt is to get back with people. <laughs> Everybody pulls away, but actually you need to go to people to be healed by people because of hurts <laughs> produced by people. Well, I had a lot of sad things happen in my life, things that I carried around for the longest time and that too, thinking, you know, this is terrible, why did this happen to me and that. And I got to the point around about five, six years ago, a young lady came into my life, that uh, Maria, which is really really been a real positive positive thing for me and at that time i thought thought about my my life and then how there's all these negative things that taken over and i thought wait just a second it's never too late to have a good a good life somebody told me a long time ago if you don't find the happiness within yourself nobody else is going to make you happy <laughs> you got to find it bring it out do it live it 
granted, you'll have some lousy days, but still, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you go back and you look at it again. If you can't make yourself happy, not too many people, there are too many working on themselves mm -hmm. without trying to make you the thing. You gotta find it. For myself, it's just, you know, I wanna be uh, satisfied with what I'm doing with my life you know, during the day and stuff like that. And I don't think I'm wasting whatever time, you know, you got left. Because uh, it starts to get shorter. <laughs> Go on. You know, happiness is where you find it. And, uh, you know, like these guys here, they're you know, a bunch of great guys. I, I like being around them. And I, that, that, that alone just kind of, you know, makes you happy. As I've gotten older, the, the need for um, companionship, you know, for people, I think it's, for me, it's gotten greater. Because after a while you realize, okay, I, I don't want to be alone. You know, I want to be, I want to have people around me. My last name is Cortez Alegria, means happiness, that's my last name. <laughs> and just be around friends and stuff like that, you know, just be around. I'm happy to see, I'm happy to see him every day. <laughs> just to see that he's alive and kicking and everything else mm -hmm. makes me happy. What makes you happy, Roy? Uh, not much. Not much. I'm down to five friends, four dogs and a cat. Yeah. No, seriously, what makes you happy? It's five dogs and a cat. Five That's dogs. it? Four dogs and a cat. Yeah. Yeah. A while back, he had to put, I think, how many did you have to put asleep? How many? Yeah. I know you were depressed when you had, oh, you had, to, you had one you had to put to sleep. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So he was kind of depressed at that time. Yeah. yeah. My best friend. So what makes you happy? McDonald's coffee. <laughs> Just simple things, you know. That's it. Yep. The end. Well, thank you. <laughs> Life is in session. Join in. You have only this day and make the most of it. Uh, this is this is the gift.
big screen. Oh, yeah? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to go and get your Oscar. You agree with We're going to get an Oscar. Huh? I get it over there. We're going to put it out. I don't know about you.